speaker of the evening is Don Chambers, who is a professor of finance at Lafayette College in Eastern Pennsylvania. I think he told me he's been there about 19 years now. He grew up in upstate New York and went to SUNY Binghamton for his undergraduate uh, studies in economics. And he has a PhD from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And as I said, he's been at Lafayette for a number of years. And uh, this is, I believe, the second summer that he has been coming up here and giving lectures for AIER during the summer program. And uh, his topic tonight is modern portfolio theory and what it tells you as an investor. The implications of investing in a time of great uncertainty. What does modern portfolio theory have to tell you about that? So with that, I will give you Professor Chambers. And there will be some time for questions at the end. Thank you for that welcome. I love, oops, let me see if I can get the microphone working here, but I think I should speak loud enough. Yeah, there you go. I speak, I think I speak pretty loudly anyways. I get pretty excited about this topic. I love this topic and I appreciate you coming out. Uh, because uh, I have a real heart to talk about these subjects, this topic. It's a real joy for me. Uh, I see a mixture of, of ages here. Uh, I think investing is important regardless of our age. Those of you that are on the young side out there, of course, if you make a, an investment decision now you, uh, for towards retirement planning, you might have 30, 40, even 60 years before that you actually pull out the money uh, that you use from that investment. And, uh, but a lot of us, uh, myself included, are getting a little closer to retirement or at retirement. And I think those investment decisions are especially uh, crucial. I talked about this topic a month ago here at AIR. And it just so happened that the night before that talk, I played a game of Scrabble with a friend. And I was winning. And I got down to the last two letters that I drew out of the bag. And one of them was a Q. Yeah. And I had no U. So uh, if you make a mistake at the end of a Scrabble game, it's, it's, uh, it wasn't a mistake, you get a bad draw, it's too late to recover. And especially in our pre-retirement and our retirement years, major mistakes can be devastating because, frankly, you might not have the time to recover from it. So uh, it's a topic that I think is fun and I think it's useful. We get so many sources of advice and so much of the advice is so conflicting with each other that it's... it's really frustrating to some people that are trying to figure out what they ought to do with their money and they get such different answers from such reliable sources. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do today is to talk about what modern portfolio theory, and I'm going to describe more fully what I mean by that, but it's basically a lot of university professors, what they had to say, what that has to say about uh, investing. And I think it gives a great prescription and I'm going to talk about that. First thing I want to lay out, I'm in the middle here, is that without taking risk, there is no real after-tax return. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean whether we look at the last 10 years or 50 years or 100 years in the U.S., if you didn't take risk, if all you did with your money was you put it in uh, a very short-term, little or no credit risk alternative. So in today's, uh, it would be a money market mutual fund or a 90-day treasury bill. If you put it in a safe, ultra-safe credit risk and interest rate assets, uh, it turns out that over the last hundred years, roughly speaking, after taxes, you probably haven't even kept up with inflation. You're a little bit ahead of inflation if you ignore taxes. And when you include income taxes, you actually are probably not even keeping up with inflation, depending on what tax bracket you're in. But that's a pretty scary thought. If you stop to think about it, that's how you invested your money then adjusted for the decline in purchasing power, and after paying income taxes, you're lucky. You're going to be lucky if you break even over the next 20, 50 years. So somebody who is is um, young right now and is thinking of retiring, uh, investing towards retirement, and the way that I think about that with today's lifespans is if you're 22 years old, you're graduating from college, and you're making that first decision about how to invest the retirement money that you're now going to earn in your job. Roughly speaking, you've got maybe 35 to 40 years of career ahead of you. And after that, you've got maybe 35 or 40 years of retirement, the way the age brackets are going. So I kind of think about it, that let's say you start investing at age 22, and let's say you start withdrawing at age 58. 
well, the money you put in, in 20, at age 22 will pay for your first year of retirement. The money you put in at age 23 will pay for your second year of retirement. Except, and, and it pretty well matches out. The money you put in that last year before retirement will pay for that last year before estate purposes. So um, if you don't make any return, then what that would mean is that you'd have to save enough money as a 22-year-old that that amount of money right there, without any growth, would be enough to retire on. Well, you can't do that at age 22. So we know that you've got to take risk. And if you take risk, it, 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 in this country at least, there's been some countries that have been devastated by wars, but at least in the United States, over the past 80 or 90 years, if you've taken risk, and by taking risk, I'm talking really about just being in the stock market, if you've been in the stock market, buy and hold over a long period of time, you've done phenomenally well in this country on average. We've just, the, this re rewards to the stock market have been absolutely incredible. So this argues for an idea that we want to put some or most or perhaps even all at some stages in, in the stock market. But then when we think about that, we think, oh yes, over the last 80, 90 years, the stock market has gone up thousand folds, uh, you know, uh, even adjusted for taxes and inflation. Over the last eight or 90 years, your, your profit is 1,000-fold, uh, which is, is, is obviously fantastic. But then you stop to think about some of those sub-periods, like in the United States lately. It's been personally devastating to me to see the stock market drop roughly in half from the recent high to the recent low. I'm talking about from, let's say, the year 2000 uh, through the year, um, or, or even a few years after that, to the uh, 1980, I mean, 2008. Uh, just a devastating loss of 50%. It just seems so horrible, those of us that, that really were paying attention to our investments during that. It was, it was tough on me for certain. But other times it's so be been so much worse. In the United States in the Great Depression, which began in the fall of 1929, the stock market bottomed out about three years later. And about three, four years later, your stocks were down 90%. And I'm not talking about if you had some really bad stocks. I'm talking about the Dow Jones Industrial back then. I think there were 20 of them back then. was down 90% over a period of, of four years. Just imagine you're on the cusp for retirement. You have a million dollars saved up. Four years later, it's down to 100,000. But it recovered, and it recovered within another decade, uh, largely speaking. But Japan, if we look at Japan as an example, in December of 1989, their, the, the equivalent of their Dow Jones is their Nikkei. And their Nikkei was about 40,000, 38 or 39,000. And, and 20 years later, it was still down 80%. Can you imagine having your wealth in the stock market and nothing but the stock market, and 20 years later, it's still down 80% from its high? It's just devastating, this horrible phenomenon. So it's this love-hate relationship with risk. You've got to take it, in my opinion, to, to, to be successful for retirement planning, but it's devastating, and uh, you could lose everything that you put into the stock market, or you could go through an experience like Japan of losing 80% of your money 20 years later. It's, a, it's an entire generation. It's, an, it's almost an entire retirement. 